Paul brothers are YouTube's most infamous sibling duo. Logan Paul is the older brother, and easily the most hated out of the two. He hit a low point a couple of years ago with the Force incident, but I actually want to look at where he's wound up since then, because it's interesting to say the least. I don't know what to do when there's a lens on me, and my actions are essentially being validated by five to seven million people. Liz, I do have to stop you right there. So you said you used the word controversial. Yes. Um, just so you know, I, I am an ex-controversial YouTuber. That's Correct. no longer, yeah, it's no longer me. We I know of, that. I should have never posted the video. I should have put the cameras down, stopped recording what we were going through. There's a lot of things I should have done differently, but I didn't. Hi and welcome back to me talking about whatever I want. Today, I want to talk about the Paul brothers. Both of them, actually. What you're watching right now is part of a two-part series. This one's about Logan Paul, and the other video is about Jake Paul. And it's already up. Hi, this is me editing this video. No, the other one is not up right now. I don't know why I thought I could upload two videos on the same day and have nothing go wrong. But as you can see, I'm currently staring at a blue screen of death. It'll be up in 24 hours. So as you can see, I might not have uploaded in a while, but I haven't been on a break. A lot of crazy things have happened too. Like I uploaded on my other channel and then it wound up number five on trending. And now I have over 800,000 subscribers there. Oh, I was also nominated for a streamy for best commentary channel. So vote for that if you want. I wound up in a Business Insider article because my last series was so popular. You know, like every day in quarantine, things have been going very quickly, but very slowly at the same time. But that's enough about me. Let's go ahead and talk about the Paul Brothers, just kidding, my sponsor, ExpressVPN. Now at this point, I think everyone knows ExpressVPN encrypts your data to stop it from getting stolen over public Wi-Fi. And I also think everyone knows that doesn't really matter during quarantine. Like, when was the last time you connected to somebody else's Wi-Fi? When was the last time you connected to somebody else at all? So that's why I'm glad ExpressVPN has a ton of other features that come in handy when you're stuck inside with nothing to do. For one, you can change your location with one click. Look, I'm no longer in America. God, I wish ExpressVPN worked in real life. Now I can watch all kinds of stuff on Netflix, like American Idol or America's Got Talent. Neither of which are available in America, go figure. It works on YouTube too. The words, this video is no longer available in your country, just make me laugh now. You have no power here. The best part of all of this is that you can get three months of ExpressVPN for free by clicking the link in my description, expressvpn.com slash D'Angelo. So go download TechRadar, CNET's, The Verge's top rated VPN from the link down below. That's expressvpn.com slash D'Angelo. Now, without further ado, allow me to present the Logan Paul video. I want to be the biggest entertainer in the world. That's my deal. I'll do whatever it takes to get that. Logan Paul, 2015. Oh, if only he knew. Anyway, Logan Paul is a 25-year-old YouTuber and entertainer and was actually born on April Fool's, which I just find deeply humorous. He has 22 million subscribers, which he calls the Low Gang, and he's been at that level of relevance for years now. Now, Logan Paul's backstory is actually kind of interesting. He's always been doing this. Like ever since he was a literal child, he started off uploading YouTube videos with his younger brother, Jake Paul. Before he ever joined YouTube, he actually rose to prominence on Vine, a now defunct app where you can upload six second videos. He was actually so popular on Vine that he wound up dropping out of college and moved to Los Angeles to pursue a career full time. I have a scene, you have your own scene, and you only have one line. Dwayne, you're so funny, man. Hey, nice haircut, by the way. All right, dude, yeah, whatever. Now for his whole early career, Logan Paul was like, kind of famous is the way I can describe him. Like he wasn't not famous, but he definitely wasn't actually famous. So his Vine popularity did get him a few minor roles here and there on television and film. He showed up in the space between us where he's credited simply as buff college kid, which is incidentally how I would just describe his entire brand in general. He's in a movie called Where's the Money where he played Eddie. I've never heard of it. His TV shows were a bit more prominent. You could actually find him in Law and Order, SVU, and even Stitchers for multiple episodes. But none of these were main roles. Like Logan could never actually catch his big break. In fact, the first time he was given a lead role in a movie, it was actually a YouTube movie called The Thinning, and therefore it doesn't count. By the way, it's like impressive, of course, getting these roles here and there, but let it be known, Logan Paul is a terrible actor. Like don't 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 get it twisted. We have to do something, Dad. I don't know why he was getting these roles. I think it was solely because he had followers. But no matter how many roles he seemed to get, it's almost like Logan Paul could never break out of that internet person bubble. In fact, he himself started to get a bit annoyed at this because he became famous for one thing, i.e. making really stupid videos that 
Literally only children enjoyed watching. But he wanted to do another thing, which is pursue a serious career full time and have a more adult audience. So shaking his reputation as everyone's favorite YouTuber unless you're over the age of 13, didn't come easy. But that didn't stop him from uploading the adult content to his platform anyway, even though he was clearly conscious of the fact that it was mostly children. In retrospect, it was really weird, but hey, I guess whatever works, works. So that's a bit of backstory on Logan Paul. As you can see, he was at the top of his game, but he was still waiting for his big break, so to speak. Not too different from many top internet influencers, if you ask me. But even though the first few years started off pretty normally, um, Things are about to get really weird for Logan Paul. So in late 2016, Twitter actually pulled the plug on Vine, seemingly out of the blue. See, Vine didn't die because people stopped using it. It died because it wasn't making money. So because of this, the Vine stars were still massively popular and had these giant audiences, and now they had nowhere to post their content. So as you're probably familiar, for the most part, they just migrated to YouTube in waves. And it was terrible. You may have seen the onslaught of Jake Paul, People Logan like Paul. Logan and Jake Paul, Lily Pond, Get ready for the fun invasion, my the friends. The invasion. Blowing up on the YouTube scene. It is happening, and it is very real. People did not like the fact that these Viners were taking up spots on the trending page with content that doesn't even make sense for YouTube, and crushing it in the algorithm with an unfair advantage because of how their channels were all jump-started from literally already having massive subscribers. Imagine several million people watching your first video from Jump. You're going to take over the entire platform. And that's what they did. So uh, needless to say, the attitude towards them from the YouTube community was pretty negative, and people like the Paul brothers and Lele Pons bore the brunt of everyone's ire. So the reason I bring this all up is because, as you can see, this created a very hostile environment for Logan Paul. He was sort of set up to fail here. His personality was already extremely unlikable, and now he was being watched by a new community of people who weren't there because they liked him, but rather they were criticizing every little thing he did. On Vine, it was good to post often and quickly, and Logan somehow converted that into a YouTube mentality. The man was posting vlog content every single day for over a year. Now, most of these vlogs were relatively harmless, but every now and then, he really pushed the envelope with the subject matter that doesn't quite seem appropriate. Rest in peace, Jake Paul. The death of Logan Paul. Kong killed another animal. All of these three videos came out within a 30-day period before the forest incident. Every time he would upload something revolving around death, even if it was just clickbait, his views would spike. So between the amount of content Logan Paul was uploading every single day, his never-ending quest for views, and the fact that everybody was watching him with a very critical eye. This was a recipe for disaster. The Logan Paul situation was about to explode in a huge way, and exploded it. For some reason, Logan Paul thought it was a good idea on December 31st, 2017, to upload a video titled, We Found a Dead Body in a Japanese Suicide Forest. Now, this should just come as no surprise, seeing as the kind of content he was uploading directly before that, and how well that was performing for him. And this video blew up as well. It got number one on trending, several million views in 24 hours, and you know, the overwhelming majority of that vlog was pretty normal. I mean, it starts off with a content warning, but it launches into pretty typical Logan Paul fare. We get a cinematic travel montage, Logan Paul acts like an idiot for no reason, and then they purposely wander into a restricted area of a known suicide forest with a vlog camera and the rest is history. Now, what I found insulting, well, besides the fact that this is already quite insulting, is that they tried to spin this into some sort of weak awareness message. Suicide is not the answer. No amount of awareness will ever be a reason for why somebody would knowingly film a dead body and then post that to YouTube. And the thing is too, this wasn't staged. Like in the video, they call the authorities and they show up. And then Logan Paul spends the rest of the video centering it around himself and how this is the craziest thing that's ever happened to him and how you should subscribe to his channel. I'm not making this up. If you're not a part of the Logan, gang, make sure to subscribe. Now this video's premise, um, i.e filming somebody's lifeless body and then posting it to your YouTube channel for clout was bad enough. But the reason that this was a literally unforgivable thing is because Logan Paul showed the body, just close-ups of this individual that they found hanging from a tree. If I sat here and listed the reasons for why this is horrible, I, I think it would take up the entire rest of the video. But I guess the main two I can go with is this was a real person and you were disrespecting them like that. And two, your audience is full of children. Like, what? Not only that, but he spent like the majority of this section laughing at the fact that they found the body. Now, he claims that this was just because that's how he copes with dark things, but that's fine. That's all well and good. It just, it raises the question in my mind, 
If this laughter doesn't represent how you felt about this tragic event, then why did you leave it in the video when you could have easily edited it out? So yeah, all this to say the big break that Logan was looking for turned out to be the day he uploaded a suicide for his vlog for YouTube Cloud. Now the video was obviously removed from YouTube, but it had already been up for 24 hours and the damage had been done. And Logan Paul went into overdrive trying to salvage his reputation. The backlash was swift and powerful. I think unanimously everyone criticized him for this. And he certainly has uh -huh. had a very swift and large response to what he uh, did. Logan Paul has had an outsized impact on the YouTube community. And the YouTube community had a field day. Logan Paul had finally given us all a reason to just despise him. Now I always knew that Logan Paul was a jackass. This douche so noodle really wearing surprised. the alien hat, his name's Logan Paul. He told you Paul. about Logan Paul. Hair. Traditional media people wound up joining the fray as well. It made worldwide news in an instant, even winding up in publications that don't usually cover YouTube. And I, I swear we only ever wind up in the news when somebody does something bad on their channel, but hey, I'll take what I can get. Celebrities were roasting Logan Paul as well. Aaron Paul from Breaking Bad called him pure trash. Dylan O'Brien from the Maze Runner series called him a POS. And Sophie Turner from Game of Thrones called him an idiot and then now deleted tweet. And um, to be clear, I agree with all of these. Like, they're harsh, but yeah, no, they're they're correct. YouTube itself wound up taking actions against him, but not that much action. Like, they, they removed him from their Google Preferred program, which is basically just this program where you get more expensive ads on your video, therefore you make more money than everyone else because you get more views on them. Yeah, they publicly announced that they were removing him from that, and they also announced that they were shelving his upcoming movie. Remember I pointed out he was in that thinning movie or whatever it was called? Yeah, it was supposed to get a sequel, but YouTube was like, Maybe we shouldn't put this out right now. So they postponed it indefinitely. Now, when the backlash is this big, there is just no way you can ignore it. So Logan Paul began the apologies. First came the Twitter Notes app apology. Yes, he uploaded a Twitter Notes app apology in response to everyone criticizing him for filming a dead body. It was absolutely impressively awful. He says, I'm sorry, but he doesn't name anybody specifically. He didn't apologize to the victim he recorded. He didn't apologize to Japan for disrespecting their country. He didn't apologize to the family of the victim that he recorded. He didn't even apologize to his viewers. Instead, the entire apology is just him bragging. I didn't do it for views. I get views. I upload a 15 minute TV show every day. I'm often reminded of how big of a reach I truly have. Hashtag Logang for life. Like, okay, it, it was, it was, blaringly obvious that he wasn't sorry, like, at all. So, um, predictably, this notes up apology did not go over very well. This isn't an apology. He's making it all about himself. You're not sorry. You don't have sympathy. So, overall, that was a zero out of ten. Next came the apology video. Now, this second apology was... Um, uh, no, it was still terrible, but it was an upgrade, okay? He at least rattles off a list of the people he's apologizing to. He admits point blank that he should not have done what he did. And he asks his fan base to stop defending him for his actions. Like, by itself, that's not a bad apology. The issue is, um, gosh, he seems so fake in that video. I've made a I've severe, made a severe and, and continuous lapse in my judgment. judgment. The man seemed like a robot. He seemed like he did in all the acting roles I showed you earlier. Even though this video was better than a notes app apology, what kind of bar is that? Being better than a notes app apology? I mean, this was still a less than two minute video in response to, you know, capitalizing on someone's dead body. And predictably, this video didn't go over well either. It, um, it currently sits at number 30 on the list of the most disliked YouTube videos of all time. For reference, this video had more dislikes than the YouTube Rewind that happened the year before it. And nobody likes YouTube Rewind. On top of that, the apology video went viral, therefore causing a bunch more people to find out what he had done. So yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't great for him. So at this point, it was clear that what he did was more than a simple mistake. So it was going to take more than a simple apology. So what did he do? He came out with an apology documentary. God, I wish I was making this up. Later that month, Logan Paul uploads a seven minute short documentary about suicide awareness. And you know what? Finally, we had something that was not terrible. In this video, Logan Paul sat down, shut up for once, and let other people do the talking. He talked to a survivor of a suicide attempt. He talked to a founder of a recovery center. He talked to the director of the National Suicide Hotline. It was a good move. At the end of it, he pledged to donate $1 million to various organizations that help combat this problem. Like the documentary itself is short, educational, and finally treats the situation with the nuance it deserves. But the timing, the timing of it all, it's, it's, it's still awful. The whole thing just comes across as very performative, okay? We have like the sad music cranked up to 11. And I know I've made mistakes, 
The shots of Logan Paul looking so sorry. Logan Paul playing with a dog near a river for literally no reason at all. Like, it's a good video, but it's fairly obvious that he wouldn't have made it if he didn't desperately need people to think he was a good person. And uh, it kind of didn't matter either way because it didn't desperately make people think he was a good person. But hey, at least he didn't pass 1 million dislikes this time. So his no top apology didn't work. His YouTube apology didn't work. His apology documentary didn't work. So next he went on national TV and did an apology interview. He went on ABC News and claims that he actually disagreed with YouTube's decision to drop him from their preferred program. Now this was pretty telling to me of Logan and Paul's entitlement because it's called the preferred program for a reason. It's literal preferential treatment and he was upset that he was no longer getting it. YouTube could have disabled ads on his channel entirely. They could have suspended him for a period of time. Heck, they could have deleted his entire channel if they felt like it. But all they did was now treat him the same as they treated everybody else. And that's something he doesn't agree with. It's beyond entitlement. In this apology interview, he also is in denial about his fan base. I want to make jokes that Kids my age are gonna like, I'm my own demographic. Are you 12? Because if not, then no, you're not making content for people your age. The whole thing was pathetic. Even though in the short documentary, it almost seemed like Logan Paul was finally capable of um, not making it about himself. Yeah, no, he just completely destroys that in this interview. Like, dude, this has been, to be honest with you, the hardest time of my life. This has been the hardest time of his life. You know, doing the research for this video, just looking back through this whole disaster, I realized something. I don't think Logan Paul was capable of apologizing at that time because he didn't think he did anything wrong. Or more specifically, he didn't care that what he did was wrong. Kind of a fundamental human failure to not see an issue with filming a dead body. I don't think Logan Paul learned from his experience whatsoever. And how could he when he didn't really face any consequences? I mean, people were mad at him on the internet, okay, sure, but his subscriber count did not go down whatsoever. In fact, his subscriber count went up. So this means no one was really leaving because Logan Paul's core audience didn't care that he did this. So the only people who could actually hold him accountable didn't because they were too young to see a problem with what he did. Therefore, there were no real repercussions in his mind. I mean, other YouTubers have lost hundreds of thousands or even millions of subscribers for things far less insidious than filming a dead body. Also, you know that movie that he was supposed to be in but they shelved it? Yeah. YouTube released it anyway, just a few months later. Like, there were no consequences for his actions. Can we just be honest here? Even a few months afterwards, he didn't sound regretful about the situation whatsoever. Liz, I do have to stop you right there. So you said you used the word controversial. Yes. Um, just so you know, I, I am an ex-controversial YouTuber. That's no, yeah, that's no longer me. We I know that. I know that. We can, we can get to that. He does that thing where if you even bring up the fact that he did something wrong, then he has to force you to admit to his face that he should not be held accountable for it in the present. It's it's hard for me to, to listen to someone to my face tell me that I was laughing at the the guy. I'm telling you how, how it... I, I, I understand. I'm you my perspective. I understand. So, that was my initial impression of Logan Paul based off of his rocky journey to wherever the heck he ended up after that video. So with all that being said, I decided to take a look at where he is now. A lot of you might know that Logan Paul had a weird and seemingly random boxing career. But I actually think these boxing matches did a lot more for his reputation than people realize. I mean, once again, he was getting massive mainstream media coverage and he was lucky enough for this to happen the exact same year that his controversy did. In 2018, the British YouTuber JJ Olatunji, better known as KSI, had recently started a white collar amateur boxing career. The boxing event was a smash hit. It broke a ton of records for mainstream in boxing and KSI wound up with the YouTube championship belt. Fresh off of his boxing win and never one to let a marketing opportunity go to waste, uh, you'll never guess who KSI called up to the ring next. Jake Paul, Jake Paul, Logan Paul, any of the Pauls, I don't care. Bring it. After this unofficial challenge, he doubled down on this in a video in which he directly called Logan Paul out to fight. Logan Paul stepped up to the ring, the fight was decided for August 25th of that year, and all of a sudden, Logan was back in the mainstream media coverage. But finally, not for something terrible. Their fight got coverage from BBC, Business Insider, Men's Health, for some reason. I, th I think just deep down, people wanted to see Logan Paul get punched in the face. So that's why everyone was talking about it. In retrospect, this boxing match was honestly one of the best things that could have happened to Logan Paul. Like, it had two main effects. The more press coverage their fight got, the less coverage Logan Paul had to worry about for his forest incident. See, the internet runs on a very short news cycle, so the more stuff you can do in the present, the more you can effectively 
push the past out of people's minds. I mean, Logan Paul wasn't escaping his reputation as the guy who did that thing for his vlog anytime soon, but it was clear that the bigger story was now Logan Paul versus KSI. Now, the other effect this had was that it actually established Logan Paul as the more popular Paul brother. Now, don't get me wrong, he was still very much in a villain role during this time period, just in terms of how people perceive him, and at that time, he was considered to be far worse than his brother. However, during the boxing promo, Logan Paul wound up taking the limelight, since Jake Paul was literally just on the undercard. Part of this was Jake's fault because he handled the situation poorly. He refused to step up to the ring at first and instead suggested that his dad fight KSI in his place. Joke or not, that was just a bad look. Honestly, Logan Paul is just more of a showman than his younger brother. I mean, they do have a similar on-screen presence and they've always been at a similar follower count, but Logan Paul just seems larger than life. And Jake Paul has a tendency to just uh, fade into the background despite his brass persona. I legitimately do not remember if Jake Paul won against KSI's younger brother or not. And I don't care. Like, I, I didn't even look it up for this video. Who cares? It's Jake Paul. But I definitely remember the outcome of Logan Paul versus KSI. The new biggest amateur boxing match of all time ended in a draw. Yes, really. Both YouTubers received the same amount of points, so KSI just got to keep his belt, and then everyone clapped and went home. I could not think of a more disappointing ending if I tried. To be fair, Logan Paul did wind up getting punched. Like, a lot. So... That was one highlight. In 2019, the two had a rematch where KSI actually won, so that leaves Logan Paul 0 for 1 where he's been ever since. So you know, even though Logan Paul didn't win this fight per se, he kind of did win a chance at redemption. I mean, both Logan and KSI got an immeasurable amount of views, ad revenue, and press coverage from this. But Logan Paul also got a sympathy story out of it. He spun the whole thing into this underdog tale. And there's nothing people like more than rooting for an underdog. He got multiple videos out of it, along with this very long vlog, which he was calling a documentary for some reason. I haven't seen that one before. In this vlogumentary that he released the week before the rematch, he positioned himself as somebody trying to use this fight as his chance to bounce back for something, you know, other than the forest thing. And for all intents and purposes, it worked, even though he lost. Now, the theatrics with Logan Paul's very scripted redemption arc are not enough alone to make me think that somebody's changed. Especially when Logan Paul still acts the exact same way in his current vlogs. Speaking of which, I've been trying to avoid talking about his current vlogs hitherto, but... Alas. I think the thing that confuses me the most about Logan Paul's content in the present is... Like, what is it? supposed to be exactly and who is this for when i think vlogger in my head I, a very specific image comes to mind i think of people like casey neistat or emma chamberlain even jenna marbles perhaps you know they give us quirky neatly packaged content that shows us that even though they're wildly successful entirely self-employed and richer than we'll ever be they're just like us like they're literally just like us i don't know why i'm acting like i don't do the same thing i have 1 million subscribers i absolutely am guilty of that but you see instead of going for the relatability factor logan paul's vlogs are kind of the opposite he wants you to know that no matter how cool you are your life will never be as crazy as his. And you know, that works for me because uh, that's the last thing I would ever want. <laughs> now, one thing I noticed about his vlogs is he uploads a lot fewer than he did before. I mean, a few months after the Force incident, he had already announced that he was going to stop the daily uploads. But nowadays, he only uploads a few times a month. I mean, granted, that's still like a lot more than I upload, but my point remains, it's a lot less than it was before. Besides that, his content has also gotten a lot shorter. Gone are the days of the 15-minute uh, TV show that he bragged about uploading every single day for over a year. The majority of the content that he's released this year has actually been right around the five-minute mark. So basically, Logan Paul went from a ton of content every single day to just a few short videos every now and then. And yet, somehow, there's a lot more going on in these new videos than there were in his older ones. First of all, everything has gotten so much faker. Like, okay, as awful as Logan Paul's 2017 vlogs were, I at least felt like they were created in earnest. Everything now has this, my life is a movie vibe. My girlfriend was mad at me, so I bought her an entire Horace, haha. -ha. I went and played football with Cam Newton because my girlfriend said that if I was really good at football, then she would give me a Later. No, I literally didn't make that one up. That's that's what the storyline of the vlog was. I told Josie about this and she said, you catch 20 solid balls, I'll give you a tonight. Like, did any of these things probably happen? Probably not. Granted, he did buy the horses. Granted, he did meet Cam Newton. He's not lying in these vlogs. It's not clickbait. It's just skits. They're, they're like skits. That's what he's doing in these vlogs. This is written. This is not 
supposed to represent something that would actually happen, which I literally thought the purpose of a vlog was. That's that's why I am so confused by this entire thing. In fact, one of his vlogs literally is a fully produced skit. Like, is this supposed to be real? Is this not supposed to be real? If anything, I would say Logan Paul's content is kind of more like the Logan Paul cinematic universe. Like when you watch enough of his vlogs, and granted, I watched a lot of them, you start to realize there's an ongoing story here. I mean, there's plot lines that continue from episode to episode here. So he'll ask to borrow someone's Rolls Royce in one video, and then he'll dent it in the next. He'll dent someone's Rolls Royce in that video, but then he'll ask to borrow their RV in the next one. He says he's bored of being stuck at home all day in one video, and then he takes the RV that he got from the other video on a massive road trip. Besides the recurring plot lines, also much like the Marvel Cinematic Universe are the recurring characters. You know, Logan Paul is the protagonist, he's the crazy one, Josie is the love Interest. She's the silly one. Mike is the best friend. He's the somewhat less insane than everyone else one. Dude, we got a close working relationship and very fine line between brotherhood style friends and gay lovers. Jake Paul is the younger brother and he's actually barely there. Um, I'm going to talk about that a bit later. But unfortunately, the part of Logan Paul's channel that's the most like the MCU is that every single video is literally the exact same. The basic formula is like this. You take something mildly interesting, like asking your friend to borrow an RV, and then you exaggerate it as much as possible. So now it's, can I borrow $250,000? And then you condense that into something as short and frenetic as possible. And bam, you've got a Logan Paul vlog. So rather than a vlog, I would more so call Logan Paul's content like a short form semi-scripted sitcom targeted towards Generation Z, AKA David Dobrik. That's the person I've been thinking of this entire time. The David Dobrik vibes are massive. So that's his content, or rather my assessment of his content. Other people might like it more than I did. But my next question is, who is this content for? One thing that makes me think that Logan Paul is trying really, really hard to skew this towards older people is because he has what is called the Maverick Club. Logan Paul, like Jake Paul has done many times, has found a way of generating additional ad revenue from a subscription-based model. So the Maverick Club costs $20 a month and it's basically like Patreon. That's it, it's basically Patreon. He offers merch discounts, exclusive merch giveaways, behind the scenes vlogs, and more. Can I just say that exclusive merch giveaways is actually one of the worst perks I can think of. You're basically telling me I can pay you money monthly to have the opportunity to pay you more money for a product that is only being offered to me because I'm paying you monthly. Also the promo that he uploaded for the Maverick Club just seems like it was written by an AI. This is the most intimate team experience that exists on the internet. Be a part of the action. All access, intimate, uncut, uncensored, behind the scenes, exclusive. It's bizarre, but Kids don't have $20 a month, so is the content supposed to be for adults? I mean, if it was for kids, why in the world would it be so adult at random times? Like, he's not violating the YouTube terms of service. There's just a lot of stuff in there that's not for kids. It's clearly for adults. But then, if I look at it as being for adults, why is it so ridiculous? Like, who wants to see him crash cars and scream and do pranks on his brother when he's over the age of 18? I don't understand it. This vlog content is so ridiculous, I cannot imagine it appealing to the majority of adults. My educated guess from his comment section is that um, it's literally all children. And I think a lot of this is just Logan Paul kind of attracting what he puts out. <laughs> the man just has an immature personality in all of his vlogs, so I think he just naturally attracts an extremely immature audience. So despite his best efforts from years ago, no, I don't think Logan Paul successfully shook his image as literally only children enjoying his content, at least not on his vlogging channel. So Logan Paul's vlog content, in my opinion, is like, I have no interest in watching it further. And I'm, I'm, I'm sad that I had to watch it for this video. So if you ask me today, has Logan Paul grown from the Japan situation at all? And all I had to go off of were his current vlogs on his YouTube channel, I would honestly say no. But honestly, I think his podcast, Impulsive, might paint a different picture. It's far more tolerable than his vlog channel. There's a few key reasons for this. First of all, Logan Paul is sitting in one place for the majority of the podcast. No more running around, shoving a camera in everyone's face. No more 50 different locations in one five minute video. Instead, we have a very professional set that's surprisingly nice to look at. Another reason I can actually watch the podcast is because 
Logan Paul doesn't talk the entire time. You know, there's no more screaming over literally nothing. Instead, Logan has actual conversations with other people and we get to hear other perspectives. Another reason I like it better is because Logan Paul seems to put a lot more thought into these. I mean, like I said, his vlog content, it's not just cobbled together, but these podcasts seem to really have a reason for existing. You know what I mean? In a way, I think he cares about it more than his channel because he's uploaded four super short videos on his YouTube channel in the past month versus eight hour long podcast episodes. And watching his podcast, I realized what I dislike so much about his vlog content and why it just doesn't click for me. The vlogs are so short that there's not enough time to explore anything. So like Logan does things, but there's never really a reason. It's just an effect with no cause. People react to things, but we only ever see their initial reaction. We never really see the impact that things have on them. The podcast is more so exploration based, where Logan, his co-host, and an impressively large range of guests will take a concept and just explore that for about an hour. Like the podcast strength is honestly its variety. I mean, some of the episodes do go exactly like how you would think they would. Logan Paul invites equally unfunny internet celebrities to sit around and talk about nothing for an hour, like episode 214, in which an inexplicably popular internet comedian, Hannah Stocking, comes onto the podcast and delivers the driest episode of any show I've ever seen in my life. Oof, I, I was on a, a tea <laughs> kick. I was on a green tea, and then I elevated mm. that to black tea. You're crazy. Then, Quarantine happened, then I got into coffees, cold brews, nitro cold brews, and now I'm on that Celsius cake. Oh, oh. To be fair, Hedna doesn't give much to work with, even on her own social media platforms. I replaced the copyrighted background music with text-to-speech, because if her effort is this low, then I'm not wasting mine on finding a song. Another format the show winds up taking are Logan and his co-hosts dishing on random internet news that happened between the last episode and this one. So we have episode 197, in which the Impulsive crew discuss Jenna Marbles leaving YouTube and Shane Dawson getting cancelled. You know, the takes they give during these episodes are not always unique or even particularly bright all of the time. There was even a time a while back, we're putting your face in in a cat's vaginal area, making a joke about bestiality was completely fine. Sort of. Then, of course, we have the worst kind of episode format in which Logan Paul and his co-host basically just exist for an hour and try to drag the time out for that long. Episode 182 comes to mind. Like, the reason I don't like these kinds of episodes are because I just, I cannot relate to Logan and his friends enough to feel like I'm being included in the conversation. Full transparency, guys, I've pretty much completely stopped working out in quarantine <laughs> like it's like really it's embarrassing but here's the problem i still look good and more so it just makes me feel like i'm eavesdropping on people that i don't know or want to know in fact the crazy part is there was only one person on this podcast that i actually liked mac and now because of some drama that went down he's not even on there anymore so it's like there's there's truly nothing there for me so yeah I mean, a lot of the podcast is just like everybody else's podcast. There's nothing special there. But every now and then, it takes like a really surprising turn. We had this episode with Sad Guru in which Logan Paul interviews this philosopher. And I was legitimately surprised at Logan Paul's ability to completely change the tone of the podcast and to keep it respectful and to kind of defer to Sad Guru. He didn't try to be the center of attention 24-7. He honestly just let him talk. I think another example of a great episode is the one with Takashi69. Now, I know that's like a weird choice because in this podcast episode, he's literally platforming like a convicted child monster. Hmm. But I find that it was an interesting episode for seeing Logan's dynamic among a traditional celebrity. I mean, Takashi 69 is a certified platinum recording artist, for better or for worse. Who am I kidding? It's for worse. But Logan Paul's conversation with him didn't feel like a bunch of YouTubers talking to a celebrity. Sometimes you're trolling, you take it far as f- yeah, And, I mean, and at I what point I are you jeopardizing your life? Because, you know, are they going to be with you forever? Honestly, there is chemistry there. I think a lot of people don't realize it takes a bit of skill to navigate conversations with people like that. Especially coming from somebody who used to be as emotionally immature as Logan Paul. Another highlight for me when I was watching podcast episodes for research for this video was seeing Logan Paul's stance on views. I hate myself for that. I hate that likes, engagement, views, any sort of statistic and analytic has any capacity to control the way I feel. You know, we would never really get this much candid insight into Logan Paul's thought process from his vlogs, so I'm glad that I can kind of see it through his podcast. And listening to him, I get the vibe that he's changed somewhat. At the very least, in 2017, like I said, he was 
literally incapable of admitting his fault. But he talks differently about the things he did now. If if you followed uh, my journey at all, you'd know there was an evolution. It's very interesting. You know, I, I really went into this video thinking I was just going to drag him for 30 minutes and point out how he didn't change, but that's not the vibe I'm getting. Now, another reason that I think this podcast is kind of interesting to highlight is because the audience for this podcast is completely different than the audience he has on his normal YouTube channel. I mostly piece that together by taking a look at the comment section. So if we look at the top comments on his vlogs, which you should never do. It's basically stuff like this. People say Logan Paul only has American fans, like if you're not American. I pray whoever reads this becomes successful and we can all arise. Fight Josh Bruckner from JD Vlogs, you won't. Everyone wants to see it. Um, no, everyone does not want to see it. Literally that. only children want to see that, okay? There are literally only children in the comment section of Logan Paul's vlogs. Now, compare that to the top comments on the episode of Logan Paul's podcast with Sad Guru. Logan came across as the sanest of the lot here. Total respect for him to be able to balance his questions and also moderate the conversation. This podcast is going to go over a lot of Logan's audience's heads, but those who it helps are going to have some eye-opening experiences. These are the type of unique guests you need to bring on Impulsive. Not all these TikTokers who talk about sex and partying all the time. People can actually learn from guests like this. This kind of proves me that there's a divide among Logan Paul's fan base. The podcast fans are happier to listen to an insightful guest than a random e-celeb, and they almost seem to resent the few times that Logan Paul uses his podcast to cater to a younger audience. In fact, Logan himself tries really hard to keep these two audiences separate, which I think is a smart idea. There's a disclaimer in the description of every single podcast video, in which he basically explains this is supposed to be a separate experience from his vlog channel. Besides that, he doesn't actually list his own podcast under the featured channel sections on his main channel with 20 million subscribers. You know, the videos with random internet people that kids like are not as well received as the ones with more insightful guests. Logan Paul got 700,000 views on the episode with Hannah Stocking, the TikTok star, but he got 900,000 views on this episode with Casey Neistat, OG YouTube vlogger. Clearly, older people are watching this because I, as an older person, am far more interested to watch Casey Neistat for an hour than Hannah Stocking. I actually think having Casey Neistat on his podcast was kind of like a full circle moment. You know, back in that video clip I showed earlier, seeing Logan Paul in Casey's video just felt like I was watching somebody who had done something terrible and just refused to ever admit the impact that it had. But now fast forward to the present and now watching Casey Neistat on Logan Paul's podcast, I feel like I'm watching somebody who cares about the content he's putting out and how it affects people. You had, pa you had paved the way for the the wave of vlogging that was me jake um i'm not sure who else was crazy enough to daily vlog at the time because as you know that is incredibly toxic the way logan paul was daily vlogging was toxic he was putting views and content above all else including human life apparently and i feel like now that he can admit that point blank that's a huge sign that maybe he has grown as a person from his situation so yeah that's the podcast that's literally what changed my mind on this Logan Paul video. I see the podcast as not just an outlet for Logan to talk about deeper things than he does in his stupid vlogs, but I see it more so as proof that Logan Paul finally met his goal of being able to do more with his platform. And speaking of which, he actually does a lot with his platform. Logan Paul has always tried to do this thing where it seems like he's using his platform for good. I mean, the Force incident is literally an example of that, just spinning it into such an empty message about awareness. But since then, I noticed Logan Paul didn't just give up on trying to do things like that. He's continued to spread a lot of positive messages through his platform after the unfortunate demise of George Floyd. He didn't just go on his Instagram and post a black square with the caption, hashtag say his name or something like that. Instead, Logan Paul posted not one, not two, but three consecutive full length episodes of his podcast that talked about the situation going on in America. In episode 188, his co-host Mike outright condemns police brutality. Whether they are black or fucking white, they are not judges, they are not jurors, and they sure as fuck are not executioners. And every day, every week, I have to watch cops deciding that it is their option to carry out execution on American citizens. In episode 189, Logan Paul talks at length about the responsibility he feels to use this platform to speak up about injustice. It's 2020. 
and I'm sure I'll make more mistakes in my life, but one mistake that I refuse to be a part of is the mistake of silence. In episode 190, they talk about the impact that the civil unrest is having on everybody. To me, this is the opposite of most influencers. Like retweeting petitions when you have 5 million followers is okay, but pinning a tweet to your Twitter profile and getting 17 million views on a clip in which you explicitly state, condemn those who feign superiority because of the color of their skin. Friends, hold friends accountable. Hold your family accountable. Hold yourself accountable. And most importantly, we must hold our authorities accountable. That shows me somebody who's willing to speak up about something that they feel strongly about, regardless of whether or not they get backlash. And to me, that is the point of having a platform. The most recent example of Logan Paul making genuine change with his power is during a Pokemon stream of all things. I guess for some reason, Logan Paul is like suddenly a Pokemon YouTuber because his last three uploads all centered around the prevalent trading card game. Basically, he bought like a super expensive box of Pokemon cards and opened it on stream, but he had the idea to turn that stream into a charity live stream. He kicked off the donations himself by giving away his sponsorship money, which was $50,000. By the end of it, he and his viewers had raised $130,000 for the National Alliance on Mental Illness, or NAMI. So, in 2020, if you ask me, has Logan Paul grown from that incident? I'm gonna have to say yes. In 2020, I don't see somebody who would walk into a forest and record somebody like that for views. I instead honestly see somebody who uses his platform to do good where he can. Yo, I got money, that's cool. I got followers, that's cool. But what, what the f have I done to attempt to activate my audience, the people who follow me, the people who listen to me, like I'm an influencer. What is, what's my real influence been? For better or for worse, Logan Paul has a new brand. I mean, he still relies on being rich and stupid and hey, that works out for him as far as the kid demographics. But clearly that's just one facet of Logan Paul's whole internet presence. Between his podcast, social media activism and charity efforts throughout the years, he's also managed to build up a new, more conscious side to his brand. And um, all this to say, Jake Paul doesn't really fit in this new brand. See, Logan and Jake used to be super close in terms of content, but by the time they got to YouTube, they had already started growing apart. We had so many fights like out here in Hollywood, like just cause I felt like he was so selfish. I mean, at first Jake Paul appeared in a ton of Logan's videos back when they did the daily content. Brother Jake's belated 21st birthday present. I know for a fact the kid is gonna love this. No one knows him better than me. By the way, it was the worst birthday present I've ever seen in my life. And I say that as somebody who has routinely received plain white socks for his birthday. You know, whenever they were around each other, subscriber count came up like a lot. Yo, your views are going down, bro. Something <laughs> needs to change. Yo, 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 yours were down too for the other day. Oh, what happened? But fast forward to today and Logan Paul has nearly phased Jake out of his vlogs completely. Jake has only been featured in the title of three of Logan Paul's vlogs during this entire year. Punishing Jake Paul. Hi, I'm Jake Paul and you're watching a bunch of bullshit. In which he was mostly just there to get dunked on. I hate Jake Paul. Suddenly you've become the little brother I hate again. Oh. <laughs> I actually don't know why he was in that video at all. And Jake Paul warned you. Stop, stop, stop. I'm not gonna lie, that one was actually kind of funny. But the thing is, people don't like Jake Paul on Logan's channel, like at all. Anytime Jake appears on screen in Logan's recent videos, there's always a comment about how Jake is no good. Why do I like Jake in Logan's videos, but not in his own videos? Logan, I hate Jake Paul. Me. We all do. Unlike Logan, Jake has completely changed and become this character that is absolutely crazy. And that is absolutely true. But I talk about that more so in the other episode of this series about Jake. Logan even publicly criticized his brother for doing similarly terrible actions for content. This year, just a couple of months ago, Logan Paul was spotted at a looting site in Scottsdale, Arizona. It was unclear why he was there at all. Some people thought he was taking parts in the riot, but regardless, Logan Paul stuck up for him while also calling him out for being there for video content in the first place. I love the kid. I love him. I, I, I will always love him, but I don't always like him. He's my brother. He's my family. He's my blood. Sometimes I do not understand why he does the things he does, as I'm sure it's, he feels the same way about me from time to time. Honestly, in 2017, I think Logan Paul would have been the one to go there and film it. So clearly there's been a shift in attitudes for him, but not for Jake. It's worth noting that Jake Paul was charged with criminal assembly and unlawful trespassing like two days later, but that's besides the point and I talk about that more in my other video. Anyway, Jake continues to just get in like an ever increasing amount of legal troubles and he's headed down a really weird path and it's clear that Logan Paul has tried to distance himself from that and honestly, I can't blame him. So Logan Paul's whole story is like something out of a movie, a bad movie that I 
wouldn't watch, but unfortunately I subjected myself to so I could make this video. A small town kid moves to Los Angeles in search of internet fame, but he gets more than he bargained for, which leads him to face the biggest challenge of his life, learning how to use that internet fame responsibly. Or like just if I had to shorten the synopsis, I would just say rich person is forced to learn empathy in order to continue being rich and loses nothing in the process. So love that. But after all this controversy and charity and ups and downs, where has that left Logan Paul's content in terms of viewership? And where's he going to wind up in the future? So his YouTube platform is bigger than ever before. On December 31st of 2017, the day Logan Paul uploaded the infamous Suicide Force video, he had just passed 14 million subscribers. And instead of losing anything, as he got criticized by the whole world over the following month, his platform just grew like monumentally from 14 million to 15 million. That is ridiculous to happen in less than one month. But since then, thanks to the advent of Logan Paul versus KSI, his audience continued to grow massively, leaving him at a nice and clean 22 million subscribers in the present and he gains more and more every single month now as for his views they've gone down a lot but don't get me wrong like they're still so big that he's at the top of the vlogging genre see before the force incident logan paul routinely got 50 million views per week which is how and after the incident it looks like his views dropped sharply but it was not a result of what he did instead it was because he also stopped the daily vlogging shortly after that's why he's getting fewer views. If you look at his content from before, he routinely got anywhere from 6 to 10 million views, oftentimes having videos blow up into the double digits. And if you look at his recent uploads, they're all still around the 6 million view mark. And he's even passed the double digits a few times this year as well. So overall, in terms of views, Logan Paul is doing better. In fact, he's doing better than usual right now because his Pokemon series is blowing up for some reason. He's also finding great success with the podcast. I mean, part of Logan Paul's podcast intro is that it's the number one podcast in the world. I'm guessing that's like a tongue-in-cheek exaggeration because uh, Impulsive is definitely not the number one podcast in the world. I'm pretty sure that's Joe Rogan. From what I saw from checking the charts, he's like number 76 on Spotify. So that's below people like Cody Ko and Noel Miller's podcast or Emma Chamberlain. But to be in the top 100 podcasts, like ever on Spotify is insanely high. And seeing as he gets anywhere from half a million to one million views per episode, no matter what the topic is on his YouTube channel, it's safe to say this podcast is enormous. It's expanded his reach into a whole new audience of older people and probably is one of the best things to ever happen to his brand. As for the future, I suspect that Logan Paul will just continue to stay at his current rate of relevance and growth, seeing as he has content that consistently engages a wide range of audiences. And he has the wherewithal to continue posting that content multiple times a week so my final thoughts are the stuff that logan paul has done is like inexcusable like i understand that he did change but i can't very well sit here and say hey recording a dead body and getting views off of that on youtube is not that bad that's honestly something that he's just he did and he's gonna have to deal with kind of like forever you know what i mean but i have to be fully honest looking over his stuff so i could make this video showed me a different side that i feel like not many people see. I mean, I don't see like some paragon of excellence in video content. I don't see somebody who's going to remain unproblematic all the time. And much like his brother, I see somebody who just proves that he could stoop to the lowest of the low for money and YouTube clicks. But unlike Jake Paul, with Logan, I also see somebody who changed his perspective over time and changed his actions to prove that he would never do something like that again. Long story short, I'm proud of Logan Paul for literally doing the bare minimum and that kind of shows you how low my expectations were for him anyway anyway thank you for watching my big old video about logan paul of course i always have more content coming out later but there's no schedule so it could go up next week or next year okay i'm not gonna wait until next year i do enjoy making money there's a lot of stuff that also has to do with logan that i didn't 100 percent get to cover but that's why i made two parts in this series so if you're done watching this and you enjoyed it then go watch the other part. You get to see my take on Jake Paul, who is actually somehow worse. And yeah, that's my Logan Paul video that nobody asked for, but I still had fun making, so who cares? <laughs>